a wonderful intro to the day. And now to start off the day, I'd like to invite on the stage an incredibly courageous woman. I know all of you already know her, so she probably needs no introduction, but she's been an inspiration to so many of us because of the incredible fight that she's put up, not on behalf of her son, but on behalf of all the people in prison who are in there for all non-violent offences. Uh, she's been fighting for criminal justice reform. She's doing an incredible job. Can you please give a very warm welcome to the CEO of freerust.org, Lynn Albright. <laughs> Um, well, in case you don't know, my son, Ross Ulbricht, is serving a double life sentence, plus 40 years, without parole. So he must be a really dangerous guy, right? He must have done something really horrendous, like, you know, did he blow up a building, or did he slaughter a bunch of people, or run a child trafficking ring? Not even close. Ross is condemned to die in a cage for his role in a free market online website, Silk Road, that where the means of exchange was Bitcoin. Mm. Silk Road was the first proof of use of Bitcoin and proved that it was, there were, it was like eBay. There were legal things, there were illegal things. You know, people sell books and art and, and um, electronics and things like that. And also a lot of drugs were exchanged, mostly, almost all, um, user amounts of cannabis. And, except there were things prohibited if, if they did not um, comply with the non-aggression principle. So nothing that created a victim was permitted, such as there was no child pornography, there was no um, weapons, stolen property, so, and so on. That was not allowed. Um, but Ross really saw the potential for monetary freedom through Bitcoin. And I believe that is why the government went after him so hard to make an example of him. I can make my case because all the other Silk Road defendants, including big drug sellers, got 10 years and less, and Ross got double life. They had to make an example, they wanted their trophy, and he was it. And but because, he really put Bitcoin on the map in, a, in you know, to mainstream with Silk Road. Some people have called him the second most important person in Bitcoin history after Satoshi. I mean, I'm gonna be talking more about him and his case uh, at 1155 in the peer-to-peer -peer stage downstairs, and I'm gonna be reading something that Ross gave me to read to you. If you want to know who he is, read his essay that is trending now on Bitcoin Magazine's site, The Five Keys to Inner Strength I've Learned in Five Years in Prison. And you will have an idea of who Ross really is. And if you don't believe that a man who is so peaceful and such a good person should be dying in a cage, please sign and share our petition. We have over 175,000 signatures now. My goal is half a million. I want to go to President Trump and say, half a million people want you to pay attention to this. Please commute this barbaric sentence and let Ross out of his cage. <laughs> If you have political connections, especially in Washington or the White House, please contact me. And I hate to ask for money, but we really need help financially. You know, Bitcoin has created a lot of wealth for a lot of people, and um, Ross's vision is what did that. And um, we are fighting for him. We need your help. We have five lawyers right now, plus other people today. And, um, while we're all enjoying this really great conference and celebrating the rise in Bitcoin's prices, Ross is fighting for his life. So if you can, please help how you can.
I'd really appreciate it. Go to freewells.org. So great to be here. Hope to see you later. Thank you so much.